boss, we can't hear you. Um, okay. Good afternoon, everybody, and assalamualaikum. Thank you for joining us uh, this um, on this lovely Tuesday afternoon. I was just saying to myself just now that I got the year wrong. I'm still in 2022. Um, uh, but don't worry, all the materials that we are sharing with you actually are new, all hot off the press. So Hornet Security has uh, a new feature that uh, was added recently to the platform. So uh, we'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our principal on security. Uh, we have Dulal and also uh, Thomas joining us uh, out of the UK, I believe. Uh, Dulal, both of you. Yeah, hello. Good morning, everyone from the UK. Uh, so I want to say thank you for joining as well. Yeah, we're based in the UK. Um, so yeah, it's very nice to have you all on the call today as well. I've got my technical pre-sales colleague, Thomas, who will be going through a demo on our SAS product. Okay, sure. So before we go into that, um, quick introduction to Hornet Security for those of you who are not uh, familiar with Hornet Security. But I do believe that most of our attendees today either have sold Hornet Security before or uh, are using Hornet Security. But nevertheless, if you are new to Hornet Security, allow me to just quickly introduce uh, Hornet Security. So Hornet Security was established in 2007 in Germany as uh, anti-spam Europe. So as the name uh, implies, uh, they started off by providing anti-spam solution. Um, but what they did that was different from many of the other vendors at the time was that they focused purely on cloud-based anti-spam filtering. Over the next few years, they uh, expanded all across Europe. So in 2009, they entered Spain, Italy, as well as the UK. <clears throat> and uh, Internet Now started to partner with Hornet Security uh, 11 years ago. Wow, uh, it's been, uh, the time has, uh, really has flown. And um, in 2012, we actually started to uh, introduce Hornet Security here in Malaysia as the uh, distributor, sole distributor of the solution. And in 2016, Hornet Security uh, rebranded itself to obviously Hornet Security since they started to focus on many other solutions other than just uh, spam filtering, as well as expanding their wings uh, all across uh, the globe. So um, the name uh, Anti Spam Europe uh, no longer fits the, the business. So in terms of international market today, um, as I mentioned, they are serving many European uh, countries, uh, France, Germany, Italy, Russia, Spain, the UK, et cetera. But um, uh, they also have very strong presence in the Middle East as well as uh, in Asia. And uh, today there are more than 15,000 enterprise clients that are using Hornet Security all over uh, more than 30 countries worldwide. And um, these are just some of our local nation customers. Uh, obviously, there are uh, many, many more, but these are the names that may be uh, more popular among uh, our market here that you guys might uh, know of. Okay, so today's uh, topic is on the security awareness service that um, has been added to Hornet Security. So why, why is this actually uh, important? Well. Firstly, if you look at um, some research that has been done, so this is actually data from a couple of years ago, but still applies today. And uh, uh, in this particular uh, study, they actually found that uh, almost 90, uh, 100%, uh, it was 99% uh, of the threats that uh, are encountered in the companies that were interviewed were found to be human activated. So what does that mean? That means um, if you look at this particular graph, uh, things like VBA macro, social engineering, uh, PowerShell, JavaScript, PDFs, all of this method or exploits that is used by the cyber criminal to breach into organizations required humans to activate the um, the attack or the threat. For example, if you think about macros, so macros, you know, they can't 
execute by themselves. So macros are those little scripts that appear in Microsoft Office document that you might receive as attachment in your email. So they can't execute by itself, by themselves. So you actually have to open the attachment. And not only that, you also have to enable, you know, that little button that says uh, uh, allow editing or enable editing in Microsoft uh, Office in order for uh, that malicious code to, uh, to be activated. So 99% of the exploits, the top exploits that was used in 2019 were actually human activated. Only one, which is this particular vulnerability, CVE2017, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is something that doesn't require human activation at all. So what we're trying to say here is that if you get infected by uh, ransomware or you suffered some loss uh, because of email fraud, chances are very high chances that they were active they were activated by your employees in your company. So it's important that we educate them. Furthermore, uh, this is actually a statistics from Microsoft. They found that the number of infections in 2019 actually dropped quite considerably, uh, malware infection by 97%. So in other words, a lot of the um, cyber criminal, they are no longer focusing so much on sending viruses because they know that it's not so effective. So many companies already have uh, spam filtering solution such as Hornet Security, um, they have antivirus running on the desktop. So those tools are actually doing a good job to prevent uh, those type of uh, infections. And therefore, for a cyber criminal who wants to infiltrate into your organization, they don't use those methods. Instead, if you look at the um, graph below here in blue, this is actually the number of unique malicious URL that are used to try to trick your users. If you notice, the number is ever increasing. In fact, it's increasing by quite some amount. So what this tells us again, is that the hackers, the cyber criminals, they find that it's much easier that they try to trick the users in our organization to get them to click uh, links uh, in order to uh, deliver the uh, payload, the malware to their machines. Okay, so this is point number one. Users are uh, being uh, targeted most and they most of the um, threats that companies are facing are actually resulted by your users or our users clicking on those uh, threats, activating those threats. Second thing is that if you look at the um, statistics in terms of the understanding of uh, the risk among the users. So this is uh, another study that was done um, worldwide. And they found that even a basic question such as phishing or basic risk such as phishing, many of the users out there do not know what it is. Only 61% managed to get it correct, you know, managed to get the to know what it is. The rest actually either do not know, okay, or um, they got the answer wrong, okay? This is actually what more than, uh, it's almost 40% of the people that was asked. And when we further check in terms of password habits, so this shows like how well do they know about basic cybersecurity. Um, most of the people who actually were asked displayed very, very bad habits, okay? So if you look at the last one, right? Um, how many uh, percent actually use the same password for multiple accounts, okay? Use the same password for multiple accounts. Um, uh, so 16% actually use one to two passwords. But if you look at those that use this five to uh, 20, five to 10 passwords, also the number is, is quite high as well, okay? But imagine 16% of the people out there actually use the same passwords, one or two, the same password for all their accounts. So that means if the hacker 
managed to get the password from phishing, uh, they can probably use that password that they got to try to access many of the other accounts that the users might have, even those related to work. So there's a very poor understanding among users out there on the risk of uh, cybersecurity. And lastly, um, another study was also done to check the amount of time that companies today are allocating for security awareness training uh, among their employees. So this is actually a study that was done in uh, US and Europe. Um, I suspect actually in Malaysia, this number might be even lower because I, I believe that we are uh, behind uh, the trend of providing security awareness training to employees, to our counterparts in the, U, in the Europe and uh, in Europe and also in the US. But basically, if you look at this, the most uh, num common number of hours is one to two hours. 43% of companies are allocating a year, one to two hours to provide their awareness training. So we have to not only try to increase the number of hours, but we also have to make it more impactful, right? So we have to make sure that we are using the right tool um, to make sure that we can get the best bang for our bucks, right? As they say. So how can we make sure that um, our users are trained well, they are educated well about the risk, but uh, uh, we can um, do that in the little time uh, that, we, uh, that we have currently. So uh, without much further ado, I'd like to pass um, to Tommy uh, for him to share how the security awareness service feature that's available in uh, the existing Hornet Security Console can help us to solve uh, the problems that I've mentioned just now. So you ready, Tommy? Uh, yes, thanks, Elias. Let me just share my screen. And so those of you who are using any of the Hornet, Hornet products so far will be very familiar with this. You'll recognize this as the control panel. This is the web portal where we control all of our security services. And so this is where you'll find the security awareness service. So it sits on the menu on the left. And so we do all of our configuration from here. And Thomas, you can we can't see your screen your... yet. Ah, sorry. Um... Okay, can you see that now? Yeah. Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Yes, okay. So as I was saying, this is the control panel. This is where we control all of our security services. And so this is where you configure the security awareness service as well. So we have our statistics, reports, and also all the configuration and setup in here as well. So the way the training works, there's two aspects to it. So you have your training videos, training modules. These are different modules that are assigned out to different users. They'll complete these, and then you get reporting back to see which of your users have completed the training, who started it, and who hasn't completed it. And then on the other side of it, you have the phishing simulation emails. So this is the testing. This is how you get an idea of how good your users are at spotting the phishing emails. And so we'll send out phishing campaigns, different templates, and then we ask your users to identify these and report these with a plugin when they see them. So in terms of the training, the templates are uh, customized automatically and sent out to users. There's different levels. So they range from level one to five, level one being your more obvious phishing scam. And then as you go up the levels, that's where you start to see the spear phishing, uh, company specific templates, that kind of thing. So here's an example of uh, a level one email. So this is uh, spoofing an invoice. And so we'll send emails like this out to your users. And then users are asked to spot these and then report them with a plugin. So we have an Outlook plugin that will sit in their Outlook client. And then when they see an email like this, they can report it. And so once they report that, that will count towards their own score and towards the company score as well. So this is quite a basic template with uh, just some links that we try and get users to follow. 
but we also have uh, fake macros, fake attachments. We have links to fake login pages like the Microsoft login page where we'll try and get users to enter their credentials. Uh, so just mimicking the kinds of things that you'll see in real phishing attempts. So hopefully the user will be able to successfully report it. Uh, but if they fall for an email, then they will be taken to our training page. And so they'll be confronted with this page. Right here, so this will tell them off, tell them it could have been a phishing email, and then it will show them a video, which is the email that they've just received. And then what we do is we step you through the email and show you all the aspects of the email that you should have spotted to know that it was a phishing email. So we give you training at the point of where you've made the mistake, where you've been caught out, specific to the email that's caught you out. And so hopefully you will not make the same mistake the next time. And so once you step through that training, you can then go into the security hub. The security hub is the user facing website. All your users will have access to this. And so this is where they'll get to their training and also where they can see their own email statistics. So this is the security hub. So under the e-learning tab, this is where you find all of our training modules. So these are the modules uh, we have various videos, PDFs, questionnaires on different email security topics. And so users will be assigned these and they'll be asked to complete them. They'll be sent an email with a link to the security hub. They'll be able to see all the modules that they've been assigned so far, and then they can just click into them to start engaging with them. So these are the different templates we have so far. They're just short modules um, ranging from 15 minutes to a minute. And so your users will then complete these. A big part of the training is automation. So once you've set up the start date for the training uh, and you've added your specific settings, then we will start to assign modules out to your different users automatically. So initially everyone will start with the same module. And then as time goes on, as they start to complete their uh, phishing training, we will learn the specific user's needs and then we'll start to assign different modules based on uh, the individual users. So these are the phishing statistics. So users will be able to see the number of emails they've been sent so far. And so they're broken down into the amount that they've reported. So the amount that they've reported with the plugin, the amount that they've recognized. So they haven't reported them, but they haven't engaged with the email and the amount that has tricked them. So the emails that have caught them out. And so if they scroll down, they'll be able to see all of the specific templates they've been sent so far. Uh, you have a smiley face against each one to tell you how you've done. And they're all split up into different categories. So these are the different phishing techniques that you see. And so what happens is over time, you will build up a bank of the techniques that have tricked you. And so it's this bank that goes towards informing the next module that you get set and also the next phishing templates that you get set. So you're getting targeted for your weak points. And so you can click into any of these at any time and you can get back to the uh, training video. And so you can do this training again as well. So that's the user experience. And then uh, from an admin perspective, everything's managed from the dashboard. So you have your dashboard view where you get your overall statistics. So the core statistic is this employee security index or ESI number. This is the overall company score. And so this will fluctuate depending on how your users are doing with the training. And then you also have a timeline report. So you can see that the training is working over time. And then there's a similar report for the training as well. So you can see as a company, are your users meeting their training KPIs? Are they actually engaging with this training? And then we have another training report, which is built around uh, different groups. So what we will do is we'll look at each individual user's performance in terms of their training, and then we'll assign them different groups. So if users are falling for a lot of these simulation emails, then they get dropped into what we call the single user booster group. 
And so this group will be targeted for more training. They will uh, receive more phishing simulation emails so that we can give them that extra boost of training and get them up to scratch. And then on the other side of that, if you have users who are constantly, consistently reporting all of the phishing emails, then we'll drop them in a productivity booster group and reduce the frequency of simulation emails that they receive. So it's really adaptive to each individual user's needs in terms of the training. Down here, you'll see a level report. So as I said, the different templates uh, are all different levels. You'll start on level one and make your way up the levels. And so this report just gives you an idea of how many of your users are currently sat at which level. So that's your company overview. And then in the statistics tab, this is where you see all of the really detailed statistics reports. So you have a, a phishing simulations tab where you'll see that employee security index score again. You'll also see a report that will show you all of the emails that have been sent out as part of the campaign so far. And they're broken down into the amount of successfully defended emails, the amount of emails where links have been clicked, credentials have been entered, files have been opened, or macros have been executed. And then below that, we have a report that will show you the phishing templates in terms of hit rate as a top 10. So you can see exactly which kind of phishing scams the company is most susceptible to. And then a similar report for those different categories there. So you can see the actual categories and the weak points within the company. Uh, there's a report over here that will show you uh, the amount of emails sent out versus reported. And then you have that level report again, but split out into different departments. So if you have a larger company uh, with the uh, departments of around 10 or more people, then you can split that data out into different departments and you can have a group leaderboard here as well. So you can have a leaderboard uh, comparing your different departments, or if you have a smaller company, then you can have an individual user leaderboard. So those are your email statistics reports. And then in terms of the training, again, you have your KPI report, that user booster group report, and then you have your groups and users. So this is where you can see who is engaging with the training. So you'll see all of your users here. And so for each individual user, you'll be able to see that of the modules they've been assigned, how many have they completed, how many do they have in progress, and how many have they not started. So the training is also very much about automation. So we will roll out the modules, the users will receive an email with a link to the security hub. They'll go in, complete their assigned module. And then if they haven't completed it after two weeks, then we follow up with an email until they have completed it. So in terms of setting up the security awareness, you do this in the configuration tab. It's nice and simple. If you are already using our email security service, then you don't have to worry about doing any whitelisting because uh, obviously we're going to let those emails through our security system. So all you need to do is activate and then you can define your settings in here. If you're using Microsoft Defender, then we have an automatic bypass. So uh, you can just flick the switch down here and then we'll go and create all of the necessary rules in 365 to whitelist our emails. And if you're using any other spam service, then we have full documentation on how you can whitelist uh, and we can give you support with that as well. Uh, but other than that, all you need to do is set the start date of when you'd like your first phishing emails to start coming out. We're going to send those randomized so no two users are going to get the same email at the same time. Everyone's going to get random emails and then as they go through the training, they're going to be specifically tailored. So you can also set the frequency of the phishing emails. So you can set a custom frequency of uh, around three emails a month, two or one on the lower side, or you can just set that to automatic and then that will adjust itself for your different users. We have that reporter button, which you can download and roll out to your users. If you wanted to run the training without the reporter button, you can just turn that switch off. And then so all the statistics will then be based on whether the users clicked into the email or they haven't engaged with it. So you don't need to use that reporter feature. And then you can specify the different techniques that we will use in the phishing emails. So attachments, macros, credential phishing, domain spoofing, you can activate, deactivate. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, you can add some organizational settings, which help us to customize the templates. So if you give us the company name, form of address, primary language, 
then we'll use all of this information to tailor those specific templates. Uh, we'll also pull the different job titles and positions of your users, and then we'll use these to sign relevant templates for uh, spear phishing attempts. So for example, if you have a sales related email, we can sign it from the head of sales. Uh, a tech related email could come from the CIO, that kind of thing. And so once you've done these settings, this means that you're ready to go with the phishing campaign. And so those first phishing emails will start to go out at your start date. And so the training you can configure on a different tab. And so you can run these separately to each other. So you can decide to roll the training out first and then follow up with the simulation emails, or you can roll out the simulation first to test your users and then introduce the training, or you can run them both at the same time. It's up to you. So with the training again, set your start date. Uh, you can set the frequency of the training. So how often are they going to be assigned a module? So you can go for one a month, eight a year or four a year. And then you can activate this awareness engine. And so this is the system that is going to run your training for you. So it's going to build out these modules called action schedules. So these are your different topics here. It's going to assign users to these modules, set a start date, uh, email the users, and then roll this training out. And then you have your different groups here as well, which you can activate or deactivate. And if you wanted to be more hands-on with it, you can always deactivate the awareness engine and then you can build your own training schedules down here. So these are your different categories. You can enable them, disable them, set your own assignment dates, assign out your users and roll them out yourself. And so that's it for the configuration, nice and easy to set up. The uh, emails will start to roll out, the training will start to roll out, and then you'll start to see your data in the statistics. And so from a, a management perspective, there's, there's not too much to do. You don't have to be too hands-on. Uh, you literally just configure your settings uh, and then you can monitor the reports uh, and get some good data out of it. Hi, Thomas, we can't hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay, perfect. Well, that covers the uh, the demonstration. Unless you have any questions. Yeah, Thomas. Uh, let me ask a question uh, on behalf of the uh, attendees today. Uh, gather some other questions that they might want to ask. In terms of the training uh, modules, the e-learning modules, um, what languages are supported at the moment? Um, so we have a number of different languages. If I just jump into one of the training sessions. Uh, so these are all of the supported languages that we have for all of the training videos. Okay, so we don't have um, Basa Malaysia yet. Huh? which is the, the, the local language here in, in, in Malaysia, the national language. Can, can, we, uh, okay. can, can we maybe get a demo of some of the modules so we can have a look at how the modules look like? Um, yeah, sure, so I can start this training now. So this is the social media one. Uh, I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear the sound. So we choose a language, I'll choose English for now. No sound. Can you not hear the sound on there? Yep, there's no sound actually. Yep. Tom, there's no sound coming from any of the videos. No, I don't know if I can share sound on here. 
Um, I'm just trying probably to see not, but, but I think you just cover off the languages. You know, we have uh, multiple language support, uh, Arabic, French, German, many, many languages. Oh, ITD, ITD UK is in, in the top body. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? You, you can also type in the chat window if you have any other questions, um, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so... Um, I think there are no other questions. Um, yeah, um, they could train the um, the videos. Yeah, we can't hear the the sound uh, because Tommy on on his side is not able to get the sound working with with Zoom. Okay, so. Is there anything else, uh, Tommy, that uh, you'd like to present? Uh, well, this is an example of uh, training that's not video based. So this is a PDF that you can run through. Um, so there's different ways of providing the training, uh, not just relying on the videos. Um, this is an example of a PDF. This is something that they can download um, from the console, from the security hub. Uh, yes, that's right. So this is um, just an information pack as part of the module on security incidents. And so they can just run through this PDF here. And you can see there's a variety uh, on the actual page itself. Um, so these are videos and then these will be the, the kind of PDF training here. I see. So um, for those that do not complete the um, training that's given to them, uh, can we configure the reminders uh, schedule that's sent to, to the user? Uh, so it's an automatic schedule of two weeks. So we give the users two weeks to complete the training. And then if they don't, they'll receive a follow-up email. And then that continues until they've completed the training. And then you can see from the admin reports who has and hasn't completed their training. So as a company admin, you'll be able to go in, um, see who's not completing the training, and then you can kind of get them to, to move along and complete their training. I see. And how often does um, Honest Security update the phishing templates that are available in the system? Uh, the templates are constantly being updated. Uh, we've got a bank of about 250 different templates at the moment, and we're constantly adding new ones. You have the ability to request your own uh, templates. So if you have a specific phishing um, scenario or scam that's relevant to your company, then you have the opportunity to request that, and then uh, we'll consider building that and adding that to the bank of templates. And so we're constantly adding new ones. And same with the training modules as well. Um, so we've got this bank at the moment, but we are constantly adding different training on different topics. So you'll see that bank start to increase quite a lot. I see. Okay. So if, if there's no more questions, um, thank you very much, uh, Tommy. So uh, let me take uh, over the screen again and uh, do the closing.
Okay, so there are a couple of things that we'd like to share with you in terms of uh, on the commercial side of things. Uh, firstly, if you um, want to actually purchase this feature of, of uh, security awareness training in Honda Security, you could actually use your HR budget. So you uh, might have heard of uh, HRDC. So HRDC is the agency where um, most of the companies in Malaysia have to contribute um, training uh, fund into. So most of uh, your HR will know uh, whether you have some fund in there. It's actually compulsory to contribute every month, uh, equivalent of 1% of your company's uh, salary, your company's payroll. And this money is uh, meant for training purposes. So if you don't have the IT budget to purchase this feature, uh, you could actually use the HRDC fund for this. So this particular training is 100% claimable uh, under the SBL HAS scheme. And the process to actually apply for this is very, very easy with very fast approval uh, period. Assuming that, of course, you have the money uh, in your fund. So that means your HR is approved for you to use uh, the, the fund for this uh, particular training. And that uh, there's enough balance in your fund okay so you <clears throat> you don't have to use excuse me you don't have to um, only use your IT budget for for this uh, training and secondly just for those of you who attended today Honor Security has kindly offered an addi additional 20% discount uh, yeah and this promotion is uh, until end of September uh, 27th to be uh, specific. So those of you who are attending, you will get an additional 20% discount. Okay, so that's uh, something special from uh, Dulal and the team. Thank you very much. No worries. It's just um, yeah, if you guys have any queries or questions as well, um, also, if you guys need another recap, like another one-to-one -one session with your companies will be more than um, helpful um, to give you another demo run through as well, if need, need be. Okay. So I guess that wraps up our session for today. Um, before we go off, I'd just like to give a preview of our next webinar. So we're going to have another one after this to share with you uh, yet another feature which maybe many of you out there are not aware in Hornet Security. So if you actually log into your dashboard, uh, in, into your con control panel, you might have noticed over the last um, couple of years, there is a backup menu. So this backup menu is actually a full-blown backup solution that is able to backup uh, VM, virtual machines, uh, as well as uh, physical machines uh, on-prem to the cloud, um, Office 365 uh, as well. So there's a lot of things that uh, you can do using this particular feature. And um, we'll be running a webinar very soon to share with you on this. So we hope that you'll be able to join us on the next webinar. And uh, I'd like to, again, thank you for your time uh, to join us uh, this afternoon. Uh, if you have any uh, questions uh, after this, uh, feel free to contact us. I believe most of you have received uh, an email uh, when you registered for this um, webinar. So just feel free to reply to that mail if you need to have any further uh, demonstration or any further conversation regarding about uh, any of the Hornet Security services. So thank you very much uh, to our principal from Hornet Security this uh, afternoon and thank you for attending our webinar today. Have a good day. Thank you everyone. Have a good day. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.